Ashes of Creation just gave us the absolute best Alpha 2 class reveal to date with the Mage Showcase. And within this reveal, we got two full action bars filled with 16 abilities, although not all were demonstrated. An in-depth look at a handful of these talks of class synergy with the different Mage elements, and one of the more experienced Mage devs taking us through some combat with mobs one-on-one -on -one and demonstrating the Mage's AoE capabilities in all of its glory without using cheats or aggroing the entire region unlike someone else. Oh my god, I pulled a little bit too many troops. Hold on, hold on. You're getting just... more. Yeah, 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 wait, 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 let me fly back out. <laughs> reset. Reset, reset. Diving right into it though, Steven is once again in the Riverlands in a new area we haven't seen before called the Hall of Judication, which was once an alien human prison slash trial location for all of the criminals of the Riverlands, which is now taken over by high level goblins so we didn't actually see inside it. But it was just outside here that we got a look of all of these new mage abilities. A few takeaways before we dive into the abilities though, from what I can tell, every single ability cast by the mage is able to be channeled while moving around. But when casting you are not running but slowly moving around the battlefield so nothing is rooting you in place we also learned that some abilities are able to move around obstacles really making line of sight not matter in these scenarios which is a really cool way to handle things like lightning as you see it arc around the rocks in the environment the lightning visual effects are honestly some of the best that i've seen in any game through a mage or a shaman or any class that uses lightning and i was very impressed by these looks they're not over the top visual effects like we've seen before they seem to to be just right for the mage and i really enjoyed this the wand casting also looks so much better than it did in alpha one as you can see on the screen with this comparison i am very impressed with how this action oriented combat looked today and it even looked better than any of the more recent auto attacks we've seen with the other weapons but diving into the abilities in the order of the action bars we had blink which is number one on the action bar which instantly teleports you a set distance in the direction you are moving which has a 20 second cooldown and can be used to traverse gaps which i thought was really cool as well nothing out of the ordinary here just your traditional mage teleport that you've seen many times before in many different games number two on the action bar is your typical frost bolt ability which launches a bolt of frost towards your target dealing ice damage and applying two chilled stacks on the target upon impact chill being a debuff that stacks on the target slowing more and more the more they are stacked and you can also see towards the end of the showcase for a brief moment where a player is in fact moving around while casting Frostbolt and isn't rooted to that one spot as I mentioned earlier. Number three on the action bar is Lightning Strike, which calls down a bolt of lightning upon your target, dealing damage and applying two stacks of Electrified to the target. Electrified debuffs reduce magical mitigation on the target and when stacks up to 10 times will create a shock debuff which consumes the Electrified to deal even more damage. The cool thing about this ability is it's a charge ability, so the longer you charge the cast, the more damage you'll do to the enemy. Number four is Arc Arcane Volley. This ability fires a volley of arcane missiles to a single target dealing damage with each hit. It is on a two charge cooldown allowing you to do quick bursts of damage with it. Number five on the action bar is Blizzard, a channeling spell that forms a massive blizzard around the player and not around a certain spot on the ground. This rains a barrage of hail hard upon your enemies while channeling. Each shard impact deals ice damage in a small area around it and all enemies in the blizzard also accumulate a stack of chilled periodically. You can move around while channeling this but at a walking speed so it significantly slows you down and this is probably the best looking visual effects i've seen from intrepid yet which is really saying something i love the way this looks and it has a really cool take on blizzard allowing you to move around while casting and really making it feel like it's his own in ashes of creation Number six on the action bar was one we didn't see cast, but we did see the tooltip for it, which is Magma Field. This ability erupts the earth at a target location, forming a boiling pool of lava that deals fire damage to enemies per tick, while periodically applying a stack of burning to the enemies within this area. Number seven also wasn't shown, but it is called Fissure. This is the only earth element spell we saw, and they didn't really talk about these types of abilities at all either, but it calls forth a series of jagged spikes on the earth in a line in front of the caster, dealing earth earth damage and applying two stacks of earthen to each enemy along with launching them in the air. And then last on the primary action bar at number eight is elemental empowerment, which is a buff where whenever you cast an elemental spell, your weapon attacks deal additional damage of that spell's element and apply a new stack of the corresponding elemental status effect to targets it hits. Casting a spell of a different element switches this effect to that element. So basically that lightning strike ability I mentioned earlier that you can stack up to 10 times electrified to 
to get the shock debuff allows you to combo with your auto attack to get the debuff done, causing damage even quicker. Moving on to shift one on the secondary action bar, we have shell, which creates a protective magical shell around yourself that absorbs a large amount of damage before breaking, but it is very short lasting. Steven talked a bit about how augments will affect spell durations as well, so perhaps doing a mage tank mix would cause this ability to last a bit longer and maybe even absorb some additional damage. Shift 2 on the action bar is Cone of Cold, which blasts a cone in front of the caster dealing ice damage and applying a stack of chill to the enemy's hit. The blast also leaves behind a field of ice mines that explode on proximity contact, causing additional damage along with applying chill debuff to enemies nearby. Shift 3 was Chain Lightning, which releases a powerful streak of lightning that hits your primary target and then chains outward to all nearby enemies from that target, dealing lightning damage and applying 3 stacks of electric to each hit target. Shift 4 is Ball of Lightning, which creates a large ball of highly charged electricity that travels slowly forward, dealing rapid periodic lightning damage to enemies it overlaps with, and applying an electrified stack to each target hit. Shift 5 is Slumber, which is an AoE crowd control, applying the sleeping condition to targets affected within a small area around the primary target, rendering them unable to move or take any action. Any damage dealt to the target will break the effect. Shift 6, we didn't see the tooltip anywhere that I spotted, but we did see the ability used on this rock golem, which seems to be an instant cast fire spell dealing damage to the target. Lastly, shift 8 is arcane empowerment, which again we didn't see performed, but we did see the tooltip which states it dramatically increased the cast time while active, consuming all spell charges for increased duration per charge consumed. Spell charges are generated whenever you cast an offensive mage spell while not under the effects of arcane empowerment. Each cast generates one charge up to a maximum of 10 charges. Everything else on the secondary action bar we didn't really get any hint of to figure out what it was. After the ability showcase though, like I said earlier, we did see the mage in action with no cheats, take on a rock golem guy 1v1, and a few mobs showing off its AoE abilities. And what we saw from this was fantastic. The mage really uses its movement with the blink to get around the battlefield while stunning people with sleep to get out of tricky situations, allowing it to reposition itself and deal some hefty amounts of damage. We also saw a little bit of elemental synergy between ability types, which cause some reactions between frost and lightning abilities dealing additional damage. And lastly, not related to the mage, we saw a gliding mount in action, closing the distance from one point to another before Steven aggroed all the mobs. We also saw while they were taking on these mobs a bit of the two-handed sword in action with the mage, which is a very untraditional mage weapon, but it's just showcasing that mages themselves will be able to wield all types of weapons like every other archetype in the game, adding a whole new dynamic to each archetype that you may not have experienced before. This mage showcase is by far the best Alpha 2 archetype showcase we've gone so far, with it running through each ability, playing around with it with no cheats, with a dev very familiar with the class, and overall talking about how these abilities can work together and play off each other and I'm very happy with what Intrepid has shown us and it really makes me want them to go back and do this type of showcase for the Ranger, Cleric, and Fighter as well. But what we saw here is really getting me hyped to see what's coming in Alpha 2 because each month we get a class showcase, we get a bit more showcase, we see Intrepid learning from the feedback and reacting to it and giving us what we all really want to see. If you made it this far into the video, I assume you are enjoying this content so please do me a huge favor to help out the channel and click that subscribe button and hit that thumbs up along with commenting what your favorite part of the mage showcase was otherwise if you're new to ashes and you've yet to create an account feel free to use my referral link in the description below where you can jump in on the forums buy some cosmetics or just hang out until you can finally step foot into the world of vera otherwise be sure to stay tuned for a lot more to come